big thing, pretty big thing. And uh, I, I don't mean to embarrass your buddy, but honestly, that's pretty awesome. That is. That's uh, <laughs> so good. <laughs> Some funny stories to for, for you this week. I went and got a haircut as you can see. Awesome looking there. And uh, so I, I, I get I this an Iraqi guy that cuts my hair. He's a Christian. He's a very funny man. He's about as uh, right on the pendulum as you can be. He just keeps bang, 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 the left and the right, you guys know what I mean. And uh, there's no middle ground, you couldn't tell. Right? He's stuck, man, he's stuck. But anyhow, he's also a hairy sucker, but he's always pristine. He's always got like these, <laughs> he's got these big bushy eyebrows, but they're beautifully manicured. And he's got these big hairy ears, but they're hairless. And, and, and <laughs> so one of the things I've noticed as time has gone on with me, and most of you boys are young, is things get hairier, man. Your ears, your eyebrows get bushy, your nose, little man, can get really fuzzy and bushy. And, uh, and so this guy looks at me, he's doing my hair, and he goes, he's got this, he's got this accent that he talks in, it's very funny, man. He's, he's got an Iraqi accent on top of a lisp. He goes, that's a, that's a hairy ear for you. He goes, that's a hairy ear. And I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, you got a wax for sucker. No. Right? No, we're not. And he goes, yes, we are. And I said, well, how painful is it? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's no big deal. So, and I've seen him. I've seen this guy. The last time I got a haircut, and I'm, I'm not trying to cry. I'm just trying to hold back the pain. And this guy, behind, so, you know, you get your haircut, you just look in the mirror, and you see the poor sucker behind you. Well, this dude, this dude, my barber, gets his wax spins it, and then puts it in the guy's ear, spins it, <laughs> puts it in the guy's ear, and then he goes, poof, up the guy's nostril, and he puts it up the other guy's nostril, and I'm watching this, and there's none of this occurred to me, and none of this uh, happened to me, so I'm watching it in the mirror, and I see <laughs> the guy didn't even flinch, <laughs> Matthew's his name, and Matthew just literally double shot. That, so the guy didn't even have time to flinch. So I remember that, right? And the guy didn't do anything. And now since my act, my, uh, my, 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 uh, my surgery, no, it's, it's uh, the, 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 uh, uh, this nerve, thank you, got locked up, <laughs> had vapor loss. The nerve is kind of, it's slowly coming back and eventually down to here. I don't see it. But anyhow, and he puts it in here and, and it's hot. Like it's hot, hot. And said it's not going to hurt. No, that's okay. No big deal. No big deal. No big deal. He puts it in here and does it. And now he says, you said it's okay. And he goes, yeah. And I could see the young kid that also cuts my hair too. He's got the same look David's got on his face. He's got a big laughing smile on his face. And he's looking in the mirror. And I'm like looking at him through the mirror. And Matthew goes, poof. I screamed so loud. I went, I'm like, you told me it wasn't going to hurt. I said, and it hurt. And, he, and, and he's proud of his work, right? He's like, look at this. <laughs> look at this. And it was, and I noticed it was getting longer. I normally trim it. I'm not an animal. And, and, and because you got to, you know, keep this stuff up. Or else it comes out everywhere. And then he does the, the, the numb here. And he goes, oh, that was good. That was good. Uh, uh, holy moly. I, I remember my mother-in-law's got, and my wife's got these beautiful manicured eyebrows. And he's looking in the mirror and he goes, poof, poof. Nope. When I was first married to Janine, I remember, I had this, this thing called an epilady. And it's right between my eyebrows. I had kind of a mono brow. <laughs> and she went, <laughs> and it dropped me to my knees again. It literally, it, it spins. It's a coil that spins. And, and, and as it spins, it gets tight and grabs all the hair. And she removed all the hair out of the middle of my eye. So now I got flaky. I don't know how people do that. They, my buddy's got a hair, hairy back, and anyhow, I'm going too far with the story. But that was my story today. Uh, for holy smokes, I couldn't believe it. So I was, yeah, that was my story. Sorry, I thought I'd share that with you because I thought it was kind of funny. But I, I was originally, I, it said David in my notes. I was going to go from Matthew 15 to 30, but I'm going to go to nine because I think 
nine asked that we share two. And uh, so let me, oh yeah, two is the two from last night, of course, right? So, but I'm going to start reading from uh, Matthew 9, and then we'll stop before at 15. Uh, then Jesus went over to the synagogue, where he noticed a man with a deformed hand. The Pharisees asked, asked Jesus, does the law permit a person to work healing, to work by healing on the Sabbath? They were hoping he would say yes, so they would bring charges. That's what they asked. Charges for, for making the Sabbath a rule. It kind of, it kind of, it makes, makes, I'm going to keep reading. He answered, if you had a sheep that fell into the well on the Sabbath, wouldn't you pull it, pull it out? Of course you would. How much more valuable is a person than a sheep? Yes, the law permits a person to do good on the Sabbath. Then he said to the man, hold out your hand, out his hand, out his hand, and it was restored, just like the other one. Then the Pharisees, this is the crazy part, then the Pharisees called a meeting to plot how to kill Jesus after this man's hand had been crippled. It's like, ah, yeah, you know what? That's a perfect reason to, to kill him. He just healed this crippled man. The man's been crippled. And they took, they were so caught up in everything in, in, their, in their own in their own heads, in their own, their own it, it, it blows me away. It, 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 it kind of tells you what, where, the, where their mindset was and, 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 and who the and how they weren't for the heart of God, they were for, for themselves. His hand was crippled. Like what, what, how could that possibly give a reason? All Jesus has done so far is good. And, and, and this is where it goes to nowhere, right? He's just continued. And, 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 and so I'm going to keep reading. Uh, but Jesus knew what they were planning. So he left the area, and, by, and many people followed him. He healed all the sick among them. But he warned them, do not re reveal who he was, or not to reveal who he was. This fulfilled the prophecy of, of Isaiah concerning him. I'm going to read you this translation, and I've, I've got another one here that I really like too. Look at my servant who I have chosen. He is my beloved. He pleases me. Pleases me. I will put my spirit upon him. I will proclaim justice to the nations. He will not fight or shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put, put out a flickering candle. Finally, he will cause justice to be victorious, and his name will be hope to the world. I have uh, the New Message translation, and I really like this version too. Take a good look at my servant. In other words, take a good look at my son, my son in law. He is, he's the one I chose, and I couldn't be more pleased with him. I have faith, faith him in my spirit, my life. I'll set everything right among the nations. He won't call attention to what he does, his loud speeches or gaudy parades. He won't brush aside the bruised and the hurt. He won't disregard the small and the insig insignificant, but he'll steadily and firmly set things right. He won't tire out and quit. He won't be stopped until he's finished his work. He set things right on earth. Far-flung ocean, ocean islands wait expectantly for his people. So, the part I really, I really, really, really like, and I've shared with you some of my testimony, and I've shared, and you guys have shared things that happened in your life, and and it just speaks to my heart. I got to tell you, I I got to tell you something that happened to me too, and and. And I remember last week I was talking about about things that happened, you know, uh, on nightmares and stuff like that. Well, I had a nightmare last night, and and I, I have to be completely honest with you. This last, I haven't seen my father since uh, since my wife was pregnant with my first son, and I still have not never seen him since. And and uh, I've been thinking this week, you know what? I know he lives in Florida. I'm like, I'm I'm excited. Not that I want to go talk to him. I just want to drive by and see what he looks like. And he's almost eight, and I'm thinking, and I, I'm like, you know what? I want, I just want, I don't want to talk to him. I got these nice tinted windows on my truck, and I was like, I see my dad. I don't know why I was thinking it. I was just thinking it. So last, last night, last night, yeah, last night. Uh, oh, 
long story, no, the, it was the night before, the night before. And I had a dream that I went to see my dad, and when I saw my dad, and I swear this had to be my, my, my message from God, God, and, and it was telling me to tell it. So I go to see, in, in my dream, I go to see my dad, doing exactly what I, the things I've been doing, right? Drive by, see my dad, and my dad and I, in, in the dream, we lock eyes. We see each other. And I'm like, oh, in the dream, I'm like, oh, my dad. My dad, you know, it's still, it's still, in, in the dream, my heart was still going crazy like I was a little boy again. And, and I was like, oh, my dad, my dad. And so I pinned it in the dream, and then I look at the end of the road, it's Paul's dad. Right? And that was my dream. And I'm like, holy shit. And so I'm turning around in my truck, and in my dream, my dad's standing right there blocking me from getting past him in front of those eyes. I can't begin to tell you how, how, in, how little that made me feel, how, how everything that, I was, that he ever said to me came back to me that night, and, and, and it just bruised my heart. And, and he was going to disregard the small and the insignificant, but he'll steadily and firmly set things right. And it made me think about my children it made me think about you guys. He will, he will not crush the weakest reed. When we're at our weakest moment, when we're, when we're at that cul-de-sac or we're under in an alley or we're, we're in, in our bedrooms in, in complete despair alone, he will not put out our flickering candle. He will cause justice. There's, there's some comfort in that word, right? And I find, and find. And, and I just wanted to share that. I, it wasn't even part of my message, but I just wanted to share that because it, it, I was reading it, and it just made me feel better than I truly did. Continue on. Then, then a demon-possessed man who was blind and couldn't speak was brought to Jesus, and he healed the man. Killed the man so that he could both speak and see. The crowd was amazed and asked, "Could it be that that he is the son of David, the Messiah?" But when the when the Pharisees heard this, heard about the miracle, they said, "No wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons." Jesus knew their thoughts and replied, "Any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A town of." A town or family splintered by feuding will fall apart. And if Jesus, uh, sorry, and if Satan is casting out Satan, he is divided, fighting against himself. His own kingdom would not survive. And if I'm empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcist? I was watching, um, I didn't even know this happened. I didn't know Jewish people had exorcists. I was watching, um, uh, it's a new, it's a TV series that you can get on the internet, uh, Chosen, I think it's called. No, no. No, that's a horror show. I don't watch scary shows. I really don't. But it, it, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's super cool. If you guys haven't seen it, and I think Leon Hitch, if you're watching, he told me about it too. It's a miniseries, and you can get it on, on, your, uh, on your computer, and it's super, super cool. It's the whole New Testament. And, and um, one of the rabbis in the Bible, it's Jesus. Nicodemus is, uh, there's a, a lady in, 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 the, in, the, in, the, in the movie, and she's possessed with demons, and I believe it's Mary, and Nicodemus goes to talk to her, and in the movie, they perform upon uh, an exorcism. And I'm, I'm reading this, I'm like, what? So anyhow, it caught me off guard. So that's, that's something else I learned, I learned this week. Um, a little, <laughs> they cast, uh, sorry, I'll try that again. If I'm empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcist? They cast out demons. They cast out demons too. So what are they? Will you condemn them for what you, what you have said? But if I'm casting out demons by the Spirit of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. For who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man like Satan and plunder his goods? Only someone even stronger, someone who could tie him up and plunder his house. <laughs> I've used this line to my children several times. Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and when he, who isn't working with me, that's Satan. Yeah, I, 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 
It works sometimes, but uh, yeah. So I, I'm just gonna I'm gonna go back over it. So with, like I said, the uh, the uh, this is the part I, I like. But I'm gonna go pick uh, from verse 15. Jesus knew they were planning, and this is like he knows everything. He knows it all, even as much as they're trying to hide. Who are you sending this to, by the way, though, Matt? You going to keep this? What's his name? Hi, Noah. There we go. That'll be in the video. The angel of nuclear war will come. The, uh, uh, so, anyhow, it says uh, Jesus knew what they were planning. And I was thinking about this when we were singing, too. And, and I went and got sand. That's why I brought sand. Because it was, it was thinking about this. And, and <laughs> this is the thing. Jesus knows everything that's happening. He knows the future. He knew what was. He knew his, his goal was this. He knew the, 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 the apostles that he had with him, that one of them was going to bait him over for a couple of pieces of silver. This is he knew that these, these Pharisees were planning to gain something. And then the, the part I like too, and here's a, and here's a lesson, if anything too, that you can take is is that is that uh, it says he, so he in verse fifteen he said he knew that what they were planning so he left the area he's like these guys are jerks I'm leaving why would I hang around these people who are plotting bad things for me and he just distanced himself and he distanced himself from evil essentially is what he did these men were planning to kill him they were to, the whole idea was to have him murdered and he. And then, and so it's su- such a lesson in life, in everything. It, it, don't hang around it. Get away from it. And that's what, that was his first inclination. He's like, okay, these guys are nasty. I'm getting away from their plot. Obviously, you can kill me. And he put distance into him. And, and the part I also like, amongst all that, he knew that, that they were plotting to kill him. He knew that he had to leave. But he was still focused, as he is on us, when we we become when we accept him in our heart, and even before we accept him in our heart, he knows everything that we've done. He knows who we are. He's focused on healing these people, and he's focused on 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 making us better. And I, I like that. And it makes me think of these. Sometimes you see these people, or you hear about these people that are healers, and they're just screaming and hollering, and it's like. It blows me away, and and uh, that he, that he would do that, and the part that he, and the other part I take comfort in is that his name will be the hope of all the world. He is the hope of all my world. When I when I was at the bottom of who I was, that was the only hope I had. It was the only only way I could get out from from. Being a mess of a human being. In, in, in verse twenty-two, he he he. There's a, there's a mo- multiple healings going on here, multiple miracles. The man is possessed, demon possessed, who is blind and couldn't speak. He didn't know Jesus was there because he was blind and deaf, right? He he, he couldn't he couldn't and he was blind and he couldn't speak, and so he. Somebody he didn't say who it is. Brought him to Jesus, and he cast out the demon from this man. And I, I think about that too. And 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 oh, I don't want to do that. And I, thinking about all the things that we we all struggle with, and we have to struggle with because of just who we are, the things that we've done. And he. Because he loves them, and 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 it, these these guys still these guys still don't get it, and the, but the people are getting it. The people are understanding. Oh, this is this guy is Jesus. He's got faith. I get it. You get it. And it, I love your enthusiasm, Noah. You should be. I, you're here every day. Every time I'm here, I want you here, Noah. And 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 and, but the Pharisees, they're like, hey, clearly, clearly he's from the devil. Clearly he's he's dealing with the devil, and, and it makes no sense. 
It makes no sense. Why would we do that? And, he, and this is what Jesus is trying to say. Why would I? Why, why would it be? Why would the, the devil kick out the devil? Why would the devil just wants to consume all of us? He wants to, he wants to live inside of us, and he wants to put doubt inside of us. And, and one more person that isn't burdened with whatever he has to say about us, or burdened by whatever he makes us feel about us, or, or tempted by whatever he wants to tempt us with. Jesus cast that out from him. And in, 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 the, um, in, the, in, in verse 24, it says, the power of Satan, how does translation call him Beelzebub? And I just learned this too. Well, actually, I think I knew this one already, but in, in Beelzebub is also a, a means Lord of the uh, Lord of the Flies or the Lord of Filth. And and think of that. And I think of that. And I, you know what? I, I, Lord of Filth. All we got to do is look at some of where some of some of us have come from. Some of I I I work for Cordis, and I'm. I'm, I used to be a welder, and I had to go. We do this. It's called the downtown sweep. So we go all the alleys to all the alleys from Main Street and clean all that up because it all gets corroded because of people go in the bathroom and we have to put a new clean that and that. And and sometimes people just screwing around or busting too, right? So we have a thing that's called a meter cage that goes in. There's a little hole where they put the meters in so they don't protrude off the wall and people will damage them. Or, sadly, people will peel open their cages and sleep inside that hole. And that hole's full of every bodily fluid you can think of, plus hypodermic needles, plus, plus you know, the orange tip, the hole, the orange tip, and the little tin, the little, the little cups, the little, the little trays. Everything, all that is in there. That's the Lord of filth. That's the Lord of filth. The Lord of filth. And, and it, it's, it's a, and Beelzebub is, is a slang for Satan that was used by the Pharisees. And, and that's what totally ran through my head. Because, and then, like I said, I think I told you guys this before. I swear, like I said, I've been on not a lot of records because it just gives me the heebie-jeebies and smell too much. I don't care if it's people. I don't mind if it's people. I truly am. It's the odor that gets over me. And, and, and so I'm working on my truck. I'm, I'm making, I'm welding up a bunch of stuff. And I look up because I can see through my truck. And they, they turn my hood into a tray, a table. And everybody's beating stuff up. And everybody's beating stuff up. And they're using my mirrors and beating their eyes and this and that. And in, in the middle of all that, I'm like, boy, I don't care. I really, truly don't care. I don't care. But what I did say is, I'm going to start up my machine, and you might lose some of your gear to the ground. So I, and, 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 and it's, I'm like, oh, oh, okay. It's, it's just a little kindness, right? A little humanity in the midst of the filth. And then, then, nobody, and then nobody came to college. They're like, I got guys at work with, who have no patience for it. I'm like, get out of here. I literally don't care. I don't care. Let them bust me. Let them bust me. Because it's a human being. People need to be treated better. Because I was just talking to my wife about this too, and and I swear, since I started standing up here and killing, the greatest commandment is love of Christ, and I've done everything I can to try and leave with that before I leave with anything else. And if you guys take take nothing from here, take that. Lead with love. Lead with love. You look at the guy in the street, or a lady, or a teenage kid who's acting like a jerk, like a like a, like a jerk, a jack wagon, right? There's a reason somebody's behaving, and we all know there's a reason somebody's behaving because like like that way. Instead of, I can remember I was I, I, I <laughs> there's a bunch of kids. My boys were little. There's a bunch of kids. They all had this big bong. And they keep bonging on, and and and, 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 and this this this, uh, this drug. They're all puffing on the thing, and I lost my mind. I lost my mind. I raised on them. I went boom. I went boom. Crazy dad. I really did.
did. I chased after them, you little sons of, and then they're like, F you, old man, F you. I'm like, I don't care. I'm going to chase you little losers. I'll beat the crap out of you. And I'm like, and I'm running and running and running. I'll run right to your house. And I'm running and running and running. And I'm like, this, <laughs> they knew they were going to outrun me. But, and then my wife, who's, the, who's always the voice of reason in my house, and I'm just telling you to leave me alone, right? This is, by the way, before I started the show, I never said that. I never said that. My wife goes, maybe we need to get some advice from you. So there was two boys, again, different boys, though, and they got the bong, and they got the bag open. I'm like, hey, boys, take it a rip. If you're going to do that, then you need to get close to us, okay? Okay. And they're like, hey, shit, no problem, man. Never saw him again, and everybody was much nicer, and I felt much nicer about myself, and I wasn't dripping with guilt for threatening teenage boys to beat the living crud out of them. And <laughs> so, so I, so I, again, I, 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 but so, well, verse 25, so Jesus, it says, uh, sorry, I'll start from 24 again. But then the Pharisees heard about the miracle, and they said, no wonder he's been cast out. He, they're blaming demons. And this is the part, again, twice in one chapter, Jesus, verse 25, Jesus knew their thoughts. Verse 15, he knew what they were planning. 25, he knew their thoughts. He, there is no secret. Like when, when I was doing that wing guy when I was a little kid, he just knew I was going to say, look, man, I still love you. He hears all, all our thoughts. He hears hears our words and knows our motives. He knows, he hears, if we say, do, we say, say something, he knows the meaning behind it. He sees the actions and knows the reasons why we do those actions. And that's the part that, 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 that blows me away. Because I know sometimes we try to do good and people can misinterpret it. But he knows. He knows that, hey, these people, I get what they were trying to do to me, not they. Yeah, I get what they were trying to do to me. I understand that you, that you were trying to do good. If other people can see that you're doing something wrong, ultimately, his opinion is, is truly the only one that matters. Truly. part I like is, is this, whatever we're holding, verse, verse 29, it says, and for who is powerful enough to enter the house of a strong man like Satan? And it makes me think about the, 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 the line, the, 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 not the line, the, uh, I guess my lineage of how people have been abused in my family. How the family tree, my family tree goes deep with abuse on both sides of my dad's family, right? On my dad's side. It goes deep and it's bad. Jesus came into my house and fixed my house. Stronger than Satan. Stronger than Satan, stronger than those words, and it's and I, I, I the other thing I want you guys to understand too is that we reach out to Him, we reach out to Him, and He is stronger than whatever crap that we hold on to. He's stronger than the lies that we tell ourselves. I remember we, like I said before, at least five generations, at least five generations before me, harmed me, harmed the, harmed the people that they were supposed to love and protect, people that were trusted them. It stopped, and it stopped with us. Not saying that I'm not remotely saying that anybody is abused. I don't, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that it can stop the cycle of of alcohol, it can stop the cycle of addiction, and I know it can, because there's, there's miracles in this room, there's walking miracles that we see in this room, you see a guy skate bricklaying again, that's a miracle, truly, it truly is a miracle, I see
few people here that are alive that I could talk to you, gentlemen and ladies. I, that is a miracle unto itself. He is stronger. He is stronger. It says here he is stronger. And our lives are proof that he is stronger. When we lean upon him, how we provide it doesn't work. How we on him, like the old, like the 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 um, parable on the sand, it falls apart. On firm ground, on firm ground, it is him for the rest of our future and the rest of our lives. <laughs> and I know Kayla said she might be like, "Where's the two months to come up?" Played bass, by the way. That's pretty cool. I think it's super cool. I don't, I don't want to mean to embarrass you, Scotty, but I, I, I tried playing it. And I'm horrible. <laughs> I don't know. Joey, my son, says, "Well, Dad, you got to see this thing and do this." But again, divided against itself. And but, but anyone, this is the part that you got to, to 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 wrap it up. And and anyone who who isn't with me opposes me. And anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. If you're not reaching out for Jesus, if you're not accepting Jesus, you struggle for addiction. You struggle for, for, for alcohol. You're going nowhere. Because Satan is able to outget me faster. I'm doing it faster. Of that I am sure. Of that I am positive. cycle breaker, he's an addiction breaker, he's a heart healer, and there's no way we can say clean, there's no way we can say good parents, good friends, brothers, cousins, fathers, or, or without following Jesus, without using him as an example, and, and I use it a thousand times from the construction. If Jesus is your benchmark or your cornerstone of all things measured, of all behaviors, before we go and do something stupid, we look at it and turn to that cornerstone. There is no way that we can go wrong. So I just want to take a moment to bow our heads. If there's somebody out there that would like to take a moment to to accept Jesus into their life. Accept Jesus as their Savior. Raise your hand. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the hands. Thank you for the little hands. Thank you for each and every one of you. Just pray over them. There's a, I, I'm going to quote David. There's a celebration in heaven right now for those hands celebration in heaven for each and every one of you that raised your hand. And I thank you, Jesus, for these hands. And I thank you for everybody here in this building. 